This is our news, the weekend edition. And on the broadcast tonight, an injured woman's body is found in Nassau Village. A man was walking through a track road, which leads from Lewis Street into Hope Gardens, when he discovered the body of a female. Plus, the Chief Justice addresses the backlog on court cases. And later on, how to preserve your Christmas tree. News is brought to you by Alive. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles and thanks so much for joining us. The body of a woman was found through a tracked road in Nassau Village this morning. Police believe the woman to be the victim of a possible shooting. The discovery comes just a few hours after police would have responded to reports of gunshots in the same area. Officers uh, proceeded here and made a check of the area. However, they did not find anything or anyone that could assist them with information. So the information that they found or the fact that the area was quiet on their arrival was reported back to our control room and that that incident was closed. The police would be called back to the same community around 7 a.m. Saturday this time to cordon off the area, which was now a crime scene. This after officers say a man who was walking through a track road on Lewis Street discovered a female's body. Of course, we are gonna wait for an, uh, an official autopsy report to determine the exact cause of death. But what we do believe, or we, we suspect to be um, gunshot injuries, we cannot confirm that until that report has been uh, released to us. As investigators were still in the preliminary stages of their investigations, Superintendent Knowles was unable to give any details about the victim, other than she's believed to be a resident of the area. We have officers, investigators on the ground, uh, speaking with what we who we believe to be relatives to get as much information as possible that could lead us to uh, close this case as quickly as possible. But we're asking people in the Nassau Village area to please, if there's anything that you know to about this incident, to give us a call, let us know so that we can bring closure uh, for this family as, as soon as possible. This latest homicide comes three days after a man was gunned down while riding a bicycle on Grand Bahama. Chief Justice Brian Morey, QC, is labeling the backlog of court cases in the country a vexing problem, but says it's not just the courts that are clogging up the system. Morey says there are several factors that play a huge role in the delay of matters being pushed through the court system. Our Jasmine Brown has more in this report. The Chief Justice was candid in his comments as he insisted it's no secret that the backlog continues to plague the court system. We do have a backlog. <laughs> It's no comfort to us, but of course every system, every court system in the world has backlogs. It is a perennial problem for court systems. Now, we are, we are applying a lot of our resources to try and, and reduce it. You look at a, at a backlog reduction strategy. Marie was quick to point out that the backlog cannot be eliminated without the assistance of other stakeholders in the justice system. He said those other stakeholders include various criminal investigation units inside and outside of the country. In criminal cases involving the death of an individual, you have to have the pathologist report. Now, un unfortunately, at the moment, we only have in, in the country, I think, a, a very small number of pathologists. And so we are having difficulty in the courts getting the pathologist reports in order to facilitate the trial. Also, whenever you have forensic evidence involved, DNA evidence, this evidence has to go away to labs, and this can take sometimes as long as a year to get your DNA evidence back. Same thing with firearms, which involves forensic evidence, where, where you have to go to the lab, and some of this is done locally. Um, the other issue is, the Department of, of Public Prosecution, so the DPP, is responsible now for prosecuting these cases. They have their own issues that they are addressing, shortage of staff, financial constraints. So, you know, the Crown has to be ready. And of course, then we have the criminal bar 
the lawyers who practice on the criminal side that also have scheduling conflicts which we have to accommodate as far as possible. Marie said the fact is no matter what is done in the court system in terms of efficiency, they will not be able to bring these cases on for trial until those factors are sorted out. As for other issues contributing to the backlog, Marie said staffing at the Department of Public Prosecutions is also a factor. The CJ says despite the outside factors, they are working on other measures in the meantime. We are looking at our work processes in, in, in order to rationalize them, in order to do things more efficiently. Um, we, are, we are working on, on productivity targets, you know, for judicial offices. Um, and when I, when I deliver my address at the opening of the legal year in January, I will be providing more details on these various initiatives. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. The initial phase of government's bail management system is expected to be launched by next month, according to the Chief Justice. The system will introduce electronic processing for bail applications, persons who are granted bail, sureters, and registration at police stations. We've developed the software, it's finished. We've done our training with all the stakeholders. Um, the equipment has been largely um, completed and installed in many of the locations. We still have a few issues with some of the kiosks that we're working with and some of the police stations. But we hope that that bail management system is going to be rolled out in certainly before the end of January. Mori also addressed rumors circulating that no bail applications would be heard by the courts after December 20th. That is not correct. We have now, we have now assigned what we call duty judges every week to hear urgent bail applications. And this is going to continue straight through the Christmas season with no interruption at all. And also the bail applications which are not urgent are also being dealt with straight through the Christmas season. So, so these matters which deserve the attention of the court, because a bail application is a serious application. You're talking about somebody's liberty, um, whether or not they are be incarcerated or not. So in the short term, we're trying to address it. A mother was sentenced to six years at the Sandilands Rehabilitation Center for the murder of her one-year-old daughter. 41-year-old Philippa Marshall, a diagnosed schizophrenic, will be transferred to the mental health hospital within 60 days to begin serving the sentence for killing her infant daughter Felicia, Justice Bernard Turner ruled. Marshall could be released before six years if a psychiatrist deems fit. Marshall, who did not testify at her trial, told police that demons told her to kill the child and herself. Complying with this directive, she grabbed the sleeping child and doused her with gasoline before setting her afire at a home in Faith Gardens in a locked bedroom on December 28, 2017. The child died from complications from the burn wounds on February 14, 2018. In sentencing, Turner accepted submissions from defense lawyer Bajan Ferguson that Marshall could be committed to the SRC under the Mental Health Act since murder no longer had a fixed penalty and Marshall suffered from a mental illness at the time of the crime. He rejected calls from prosecutors Kristen Stubbs and Tomel Roker to jail Marshall for 30 years. Still ahead tonight, only two weeks left before the ban on the single-use plastics comes into effect. And we continue our 12 Days of Christmas countdown. That's coming up when our news, the weekend edition, returns. <laughs>